Well, hello YouTube, it's me Fortmaster, and welcome to another Kutzka's Art Reaction. And man, have they been putting these out recently. Uh, what happens if you destroy a black hole? I don't know. No, but seriously, I mean, how would you even destroy a black hole? Uh, you can just... The only way that I know of, of how a black hole would disappear is through Hawking radiation. Now, keep in mind, I need to remember how Hawking radiation works. So, I think throughout, like, all of, like, space and the universe, you have these little particles that just... That will just, like, appear like a positive and a negative one. And they'll just appear, split apart, and then immediately come back together and just annihilate themselves. Hawking radiation comes from uh, the black hole sucking up the negative part with the positive part then shooting off because it doesn't have a negative part anymore. And the black hole losing that equivalent amount of mass of that one negative particle. I think that's how Hawking radiation works. Granted, it's been a while since I've looked it up, so you might want to take that with a grain of salt. But yeah, um, I remember, uh, I remember hearing somebody say that, um, like after the heat death of the universe, uh, that would be the way that, like, black holes would essentially evaporate, just slowly, slowly, um, over like billions and billions of years, as they have no new matter to suck in to add to their mass. But to actually destroy one. I mean, I don't think you'd be able to shoot something at it to destroy it, because, you know, it would just get sucked in. Yeah, so I don't know how you would even destroy a black hole. I'm definitely... Well, well hopefully they describe how you destroy a black hole, because that's a very important part of the question of what happens if you do destroy a black hole, because you need to know how to do it in the first place. <laughs> but yeah, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will be leading to my newest Let's Play. And yeah, with all that out of the way, let's get this thing started then, shall we? Black holes can destroy everything. Yeah. But can they be destroyed? What happens if we push physics to the absolute limit, maybe even breaking it and the universe in the process? Let's create a tiny black hole about the mass of our moon in the Kurzgesagt labs and try to rip it apart. That whole thing with banana, the first thing that, um, the one thing that reminded me of, oh god, what was it called? It was the, that, um, the faster than light drive they used, um, in, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, and they, they, basically, the way they used, um, the, basically the way they, uh, broke the speed of light was being, everywhere in the universe at once until you were at where you wanted to be. Experiment one, nuke it. I don't think Make that's gonna work. Break things. So to set the mood, let's explode the world's entire nuclear arsenal around our black hole. Boom. Black holes swallow whatever crosses their event horizon, matter and energy. Yeah. And since E equals MC squared, all the energy that enters a black hole increases its mass. The mass of a black hole is proportional to its size, so as we nuke our tiny black hole, it just gets bigger and more massive. That's Experiment what I thought. two, antimatter. Matter and antimatter oh. annihilate each other. What will happen yeah, if we throw I didn't moon's even think massive of that. antimatter at it? Unfortunately, when an object enters a black hole, the black hole will completely delete its past identity, whether it's made of matter or of antimatter. Black holes only care about gravity, which only depends on the total mass energy of an object. And the mass of a particle is the same as its corresponding antiparticle, so throwing an anti-moon has the same effect as throwing a moon. The black hole just gets more massive. You know, actually think about it, that is slightly terrifying that a black hole is, is so powerful, it ignores the difference between matter and antimatter. That is a terrifying thought. This deleting ability of black holes is pretty interesting. It means that despite oh, no, their size Pikachu. and power, black holes are, in a way, similar to elementary particles. An elementary particle like an electron is an extremely simple object, fully specified by just three numbers, its mass, spin, and charge. Though you can't know two, no wait, no. Spin and never mind. No, I was I was gonna say you can't know two of those at the same time, but I was thinking of something different. Ugh. And amazingly, the same is true for black holes. They have a mass, they can rotate and carry an electric charge. Once a black hole forms, it doesn't matter if it comes from a collapsed star, an anti-star, or a banana. 
it will always be fully described by those three numbers, nothing else. But if a black hole is basically a weird particle, could we destroy it with an anti-black hole? What? Anti-black hole? Do you mean... No, wait, but they, they said uh, antimatter and matter isn't... Uh, like, it, it doesn't matter. So you would need something like a white hole. I, I was going to say something about, like, but then wouldn't the black hole just absorb the white hole since the white hole is just endlessly put outputting stuff? But then um, my lack of uh, theoretical physics education has started to break down and my mind is starting to go screwy. Experiment 3. Anti-black hole. How exciting. A particle has the same mass as its corresponding antiparticle, but opposite charge. Since a black hole has mass and electric charge, its corresponding anti-black hole should have the same mass and opposite electric charge. What if we make them collide? Sadly, the charge will just add up and cancel out. So after the collision, we'll just get a new black hole twice as massive with no charge. Great, now we can't destroy it even further. It's a neutron black hole. Okay, we need to think bigger and stretch physics harder. No, not banana mode. Experiment four, destroy the event horizon. It's true that a black hole can carry spin and charge, but even for these crazy objects, there are limits. If the spin or the charge of a black hole becomes too large, something really weird will happen. The event horizon will dissolve. In a simplified way, we think of black holes as hiding a singularity inside, an infinitely yeah. compressed mass with such strong gravity that absolutely nothing can escape from its surroundings, not even light. This is why a black hole looks like a black sphere of nothingness. The, the event horizon has, yeah. is the outer edge of this ultimate prison. Cross it, and you'll never be able to come back. But when a black hole rotates, it works a bit like a spinning washing machine. It's as if the rotation wants to repel nearby objects and push them out of the black hole, which doesn't happen because its gravity is so strong. But yeah. if the rotation gets too fast, this effect will win, and the event horizon will disappear. Nearby objects won't be imprisoned forever anymore. The same thing happens with the electric charge. Make it too large, and our ironclad jail will break open. If we manage to destroy the event horizon, the singularity would still be there, and objects would still naturally fall towards it. If you hit it, you would still die horribly and quickly. Oh. But the vicinity of the singularity won't be an inescapable prison anymore. You could get as close as you want and come back. This should count as destroying the black hole. Oh god, okay, so you have a black hole, a point of infinite mass and infinite density, but you have it spin so quickly, theoretically, you have it spinning at an infinite speed, which would be strong enough to destroy the event horizon and allow things to escape from it. That is such a... That is a... That's a brain twister right there. Oh, wow. But twist spinning, that would be going faster than the speed of light. So, well, yeah, so, um. Oh, okay. We're only four minutes into the video. What do they have to say about this? Can we do it? Experiment five, overfeeding. All we have to do is to overcharge or overspin the black hole. We could do this by throwing objects with a small mass and a lot of charge or angular momentum so that the charge or spin increases faster than the mass. We have to overfeed the black hole until it reaches the point where it breaks open. However, whether you can actually do this is the subject of passionate argument. <laughs> yeah, that's the... Yeah. Think of a charged black hole. Equal charges repel each other, and the more of the same charges you squish together, the more they push back. So let's say that we have a negatively charged black hole and we want to overfeed it with electrons, for example, whose charge is far larger than its mass. The electrons will feel an electrostatic repulsion, and the more electrons we throw, the larger the negative charge of the black hole will be, and the stronger the repulsion. But once we reach the upper limit, the electrostatic repulsion will be so strong that it won't allow any more electrons to come in. At this point, the black hole will refuse to be overfed. With the spin, it's similar. Once the black hole reaches its upper limit, it won't gobble more spin. But some scientists have discovered what looks like a loophole. 
If an instant before the black hole reaches the limit, we throw the right amount of matter in in just the right way, it looks like we could actually overfeed it. Most scientists How? are skeptical, but let's give it a try anyway. The end. Breaking physics. There is a catch, though. Uh -huh. The event horizon of a black hole hides the singularity. So destroying the horizon would leave us with a naked singularity, one that is not hidden by an event horizon. And this poses a problem. It could mean the end of physics as we know it. There's a big dirty secret about black holes. Contrary to widespread belief, the singularity of a black hole is not really at its center. No, it's in the future of whatever crosses the horizon. Black what? Holes warp the universe so drastically that at the event horizon, space and time switch their roles. Once you cross it, falling towards the center means going towards the future. That's why you can't escape. Stopping your fall and turning back would be just as impossible as stopping time and traveling to the past. So the singularity is actually in your future, not in front of you. And just like you can't see your own future, you won't see the singularity until you hit it. But you also can't hit something that's in your future, only sort of experience it. Like you'll experience your next birthday when it happens. <laughs> that's, that's a sentence all right. You can't hit the singularity, you can only experience it. That almost sounds like the um the catchphrase to like any number of like fancy resorts or something. You can't be here. You can only experience it. Ooh. Singularities that are in the future are not a problem because we can't see them or interact with them. But a naked singularity would be in front of us for all of us to see. What would we see? Well, the whole point is that it's impossible to know. A singularity is a region of infinite gravity, and gravity is the bending of space-time. At a singularity, the bending is so radical that the fabric of space-time is literally broken. Space and time don't exist anymore. This means that you can't predict anything, since predicting means making a forecast about where and when something will happen. But where and when have lost their meaning. Oh no, the pretzel, no! So we have an unpredictable thing with infinite gravity and therefore infinite energy. This means that anything could come out of it for no reason, from a pile of bananas to lost socks or a solar system. Predictability, causality, and physics as we know it would break down. We think that singularities should exist in nature because we can prove that under very general conditions, gravitational collapse leads to the formation of singularities. However, scientists think that nature forbids the formation of naked singularities. Something enforces the creation of an event horizon around them to prevent their insanity from infecting the rest of the universe. Without event horizons, physics may not make sense at all. So although black holes have been portrayed as the ultimate monsters of the universe, they may actually be the heroes that keep us safe from the madness of singularities. So if we do destroy the horizon, we might destroy the fundamental rules of the universe. You know what? Let's not do that. Conclusion, the safe option. <laughs> yeah, the as same far as option, we know, sure. There's just one safe method to destroy a black hole. Wait. All black holes emit tiny particles, a phenomenon called Hawking radiation. Yeah, there we are. This what was I talking about? causes them to slowly lose mass until they eventually evaporate, leaving behind no horizon and no naked singularity. The time it takes for a black hole to completely evaporate depends on its mass. For our mini black hole the size of a speck of dust, it will be about 10 to the power of 44 years. 10 billion trillion trillion times the present age of the universe. Oh! So is it possible to destroy a black hole? Yes, we just have to wait. I, granted, I am, I, I know this entire video was like literally 100% speculation. I don't think us as a species will ever get anywhere near the, the power or the ability required to even think about destroying a black hole. But the thought of the singularity being almost like the warp from 40K, being like this, it being like this infinite void of absolute insanity that if it was to come into the rest of the universe would break it. I, I honestly did not see that coming. <laughs> It, it, it really is. It is weird. I can almost see that being like...
like the catalyst for a post-apocalyptic story or something? Oh, they destroyed the event horizon of a black hole and they were met with the pure insanity which destroyed the universe. Oh god, I can I, I could imagine almost like a sci like a sci-fi post-apocalyptic something or over there. Oh, that would be funny. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Um that is all that I have for this video. That was that video did not go in a direction I thought it was going to go there. Uh, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will be leading to my newest Let's Play of the day. And with that all out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Goodbye.